Hi, Christopher. Good, Good morning. morning. Good. Okay. Should we kick off? Let's kick it off. Yeah. Cool. Okay, I'll just get everyone to go on mute, please. Just while we go through the housekeeping. Um, so with Jasmine's webinars, um, usually she gets everyone to have a use the chat function. Um, if you have any questions for um, Karen, just chop, um, chuck it in the uh, chat and we'll um, uh, go through them at the end. I'll just make sure that I'm recording this. You have to bear with me. I'm not going to be as great as Jasmine, <laughs> but I will do my best. <laughs> okay, cool. We are recording. Perfect. Okay. Um, perfect. So we have our lovely Karen, Karen Boss, Bosshoff, Bosshoff. That's right. Yes. <laughs> um, from Lark Studio. So you run Lark, Lark Studio, which is a custom yep. branding agency um, located on the Gold Coast that specializes in graphic design. Um, I absolutely adore your work, by the way. I think it's absolutely stunning. Um, and you do product. <laughs> Stalker. <laughs> <laughs> product and venue photography and illustration. Um, Karen is a very talented artist. Uh, yes, which which means that yeah, you can custom design as I was saying before your logo by hand, which just blows <laughs> me away. Like I have to see this in person. Um, um, and apparently, Lux Studio uh, actually launched something very exciting last week. Am I correct? Oh, no, not yet. Um, the oh. launch date is at the end of the month. Oh, okay. Do you want to run yes. through us what that is? Or oh, we're going to keep that a surprise? <laughs> I can tell you it's big. It's, um, I, I, I tend to, to think a little bit too big for my brain. So, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Um, sort of a race to the finish line to get it finished. It's a, um, an Australian-based Free resources for startup companies, small to medium companies, specifically um, around their visuals. So anything that's visual that's going to go on social media, um, any form of advertising, um, your graphics, your brochures, your templates, even from your logos to your photography, is a giant database of specifically Australian thought out resources for Australian startups and entrepreneurs. So we're madly coding in the background, trying to get everything loaded on there and creating things. So um, in a couple of weeks, we'll, we'll let you know when it's ready and we'll send everybody a bottle of champagne and we can all have a virtual roof wedding. <laughs> yes, that sounds amazing. Um, yeah. Yeah, so just a reminder, everyone, just to pop um, any questions that you have in the chat, and we'll definitely be following you uh, for your new launch. I'm very, very excited. Um, <laughs> Thank you. So as everyone can probably tell Karen's accent, you're South African? South African. Right? Yes, yes. yes. We, uh, we actually have a, a special guest. They'll be cross with me if I don't say anything, or maybe they'll be embarrassed. Ilza Marie is also, she's actually... In South Africa at the moment joining us and um, it's one o'clock in the morning there so she's a she's a real trooper for coming in and watching me. <laughs> oh welcome thank you for joining us <laughs> that is dedication that's I don't know if that's it's dedication or love so. <laughs> <laughs> oh lovely lovely mm -hmm. um so you bring over 17 years experience in design and branding um working in huge lo uh, global brands such as Coca-Cola uh, Vodafone and a number of national sports teams. In the early years. <laughs> Is there anything yeah. you can't do? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I can't sing. <laughs> That's okay. I can demonstrate if you like, but <laughs> no, no. no. Okay. <laughs> well, I think it's safe to say that Karen, you know branding. Like you are right up there. Um, <laughs> So, all right, well, let's kick this off. Um, I have a couple of questions for you, if you don't mind. Um, what is the origin of branding? Why do businesses do it? Well, uh, I like to tell a little story about branding when I start um, with this particular question. And that's um, in the good old days, 
farmers had cattle and I think in Australia it's a good analogy as well. You had the big cattle ranches also in America and there were no fences and no borders and um, there were often disputes about whose cattle was whose cattle and so the farmers developed a method which I'm sure you're all familiar with. Heat it up on the end and they brand the cattle with their, their initials. So it was a way of distinguishing whose cows were whose cows and who they belonged to. And as time went by, it was a way of um, establishing whose cow was the better cow. So if your cow had the lark logo on it, it was the best cow and you knew that what you were getting was, was a quality cow. <laughs> we can put it that way. So that's where it all started an identification of somebody's property that was for sale. So um, as time has gone, gone on, obviously we've developed this as we are, we evolve and um, things get more complicated and more complex and technology evolves and a simple brand that was sort of stamped onto the, the rump of the cow has now become a far more complicated thing with so many different cultures and so many different countries. You're you're creating a business that people will recognize you by and it's it's your stamp of identification and it's your stamp of, of approval. So um, businesses obviously are doing it to identify themselves and to differentiate themselves from other companies as well. I've never thought of it that way. That's actually <laughs> a really good way of putting it and it's, it's common sense really, but yeah. I've, I've... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Down to basics, yeah. Please don't do that to me though. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I love that. Absolutely. Um, so in in your opinion, why hire a brand um specialist if, like when I can just whip something up myself? Um what what makes a brand specialist yeah. go to? This is it's a, such a um it's a challenging question at the moment. As you know, there are so many platforms on which you can just hop onto quickly. You can create something quickly. You can create something free. You can uh, create it like you want to create it. Um, so, so many people ask, you know, what's the point? Why spend the money on somebody else? In my opinion, I can do <laughs> as a, as a layman. And, um, the reason behind it is the um, is just what I call the study of visual communication. So, um, a person who's studied design has studied um, history. They've studied well, a, a person who studied design well. So, if you've got a formal education in design, you would have been um, exposed to the study of marketing. You would have been exposed to the study of history of art. Um, the study of popular culture. So um, at my university where we studied, we studied this all-encompassing look at books, entertainment, art, illustration, um, marketing, all these different things. And so when you bring that to the party, when you're creating a brand or start as basic as creating just a logo, you've already got um, sort of presets in your mind of what can and can't work for a specific situation. So I find a lot of clients will, um, what they'll do is they'll say, this is my business, I love, uh, I love orange, I love this font, and um, they very often don't stop to think about what it is user wants. So they design this entire business around themselves, and the end user doesn't... Um, doesn't resonate with what you're trying to say if that's your your target market. Often, more often than not, sometimes if you're really passionate about, say, doing eyelashes or uh, uh, having a beauty spa, then your passion will resonate in your logo. And if your target market is like you and they also have a passion for those things, chances are good that you'll probably hit the mark should be in terms of a, a visual brand. If you have some strange ideas or, um, for example, I like to uh, <laughs> use an example of a, a client of mine. She wanted to open a hair salon 
um, with a beauty salon and her husband convinced her that black, yellow and white, which are my colors, are the most they're the most out there and um, people will catch their attention and um, you're going to get the most clients because everyone's going to see you. But they didn't stop to call 65 years plus woman who had no interest in black and yellow and it really didn't talk to them. <laughs> it was like a warning sign. Stay away, yeah. stay away. So um, as a professional who's, who's studied these things, you know a little bit of the history and why things work they, the way they do, what col colors are um, inappropriate in certain cultures. A lot of cultures are shunned towards certain colors. So if you're um, uh, leaning towards a, a more uh, Middle Eastern culture, you're probably going to avoid the color uh, pink, Altogether, you might lean towards a color that's more of a, a, a rich green. And there are cult, cultural substantiations for each of those choices that you make, even with your fonts. So you might think you, you're choosing a font that you like, but um, the history behind that font and the, the connotations behind those things are, are often more complex than we think. And also, want to create something quickly. They want a logo, they want to launch their business, they want to go, 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 go. And they don't sit to consider um, the balance, the proportions, what things mean in their logos. And if you're looking at long term, I think it's very important to take all those things into consideration. If you want your brand to stand the test of time, if you want to grow your brand, you've got to look at all these things so that halfway down the line, you don't go, oh my word, what have I done? I've got to start over. Yeah, that's so that, that's So um, yeah, and also uh, on a large point on that specific note, somebody who can draw uh, specifically what I studied, it was it was very important that we we studied a bachelor of arts. So I've got a degree in fine arts, specialising in graphic design and visual communication. So the um, practical nature of drawing, coming up with concepts, using your brain to think outside the box was was very prevalent in in studies and. In order to come up with something original and something that is going to stand out and in important to have somebody who can do those things and think in that way wow I, yeah you just i mean you just think you can just you know jump on canva and just pick out whatever you yeah. like but it's really not about you know you it's about who you want to bring in yeah um, that that's yeah Wow, and great. you're lucky if you're lucky if those two um, meet at the same level because then then you've got an easy job. But if your your target market is somebody completely different to who you are, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I guess you wouldn't have like a neon flashing sign for you know if your target market is a sixty year old woman or you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um cool so how how do you define your brand um character before penning pa putting pen to paper all righty so um again we go back to the same thing where people are in a, a big rush these days so instantly and nobody really stops to take the time to think about your brand and how it looks what do you want out of your brand um, as I describe it often, I use a, a, I like analogies. Um, if you see a logo, you should be able to tell to some degree what that company represents. If I've got a big graffiti logo and it's uh, crazy wild colors, I'm not going to assume that um, it's a financial institution, for example extreme extreme example so what i like people to do is i like you to play a game of pictionary you all know pictionary yep yep and you start with your pen and your paper and you draw you just draw and you try and get your thoughts out of your head visually on the paper what would your what 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 would your brand look like would would there be a person in it would it just be writing would it be big bold marks as um, 
as a starting as a starting point, I think that's that's very important to get your head out there. But what I do for my for my clients is I've got a um, which we're going to chat about a little later as well is a, a brand personality test. So it's a questionnaire that you can you can uh, download, and it takes you comprehensively through all the aspects of your brand. I know some of the people that are listening in have done the questionnaire already. But it really forces you, it forces you to sit down and think about what you, from your brand and what you want to represent. Because if you don't know those things, you are going to fall into the trap of doing something that you like, that makes you feel nice, rather than selling your product or reaching the, the correct target market. So that's really, really important to me. So um, we'll chat about that now now. Um, I'll give you a link as well where you can uh, download that, that questionnaire immediately off the website and answer a few of the tough questions that are. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, so just, just a reminder, everyone, if you've got any questions for um, Karen, just pop it in the um, chat and we'll go through that. Um, Sorry, another one from me. I'm going to hog you. <laughs> what is a brand book, like a style guide, and why on earth should I invest in having one created? All right. Yeah, actually, um, I'm going to open one up for you guys. Um, a brand book is basically, it's a, it's a manual for other people to use and to remind yourself who you are and what, what message your brand wants to uh, portray to people. So I'm going to share my screen for you guys quickly, just to show you a quick example of what a brand book is. Basically, a brand book is something that comes after you've defined, um, uh, after you've defined your logo, after you've defined what you, and, and all of these things. So um, it's a manual. It's like getting an instruction manual for your brand. So I'm going to pop on over here and I'm going to share it with you. If you uh, can't see it, please do let me know. Let's have a share screen. Oh, um, share screen is disabled from your side. Huh? <laughs> How do I fix that? Nope. <laughs> I'll let I'll let you have a look there at the bottom. There's a big share screen button, but it might be in the um, in the settings. Not to worry. Um, the yeah, option you do the option you have, Cara, is you can hand over hosting responsibilities to Karen, and um, then she can share screen. No props. Oh, okay, I'll try that. Sorry. Sorry, oh, buddy. There we go. No, please. Thank you. You saved us. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> okay, great. okay. Thanks so much. I think it's important for people to see this one. So I'm going to show you something that I've done recently for a client. Um, their brand is called Tales of Tomorrow and they're an events company. And basically their brand book helps other people who are going to be using their brand know how to use their brand. So it's like me uh, taking my business and saying, and here's my brochure, uh, please go and tell the world about me. And the postman is going to go, you know, sure, I can tell everybody about you, but I really don't know anything about you. I don't know how to tell people about you. Uh, maybe I'll use Canva and stick your logo over some picture of a, a burger or something. They've got no context to work from. And um, if you're going to grow your bag, band. So this is, I, I, I think very few of us wanted them to stay as they were. We wanted them to grow. We had future goals for them. We didn't, we didn't want to stagnate and, and stay in the happy comfort zone of starting a business month one. We wanted to see month two and month three and we wanted to grow and we wanted to hire that second person or third person or fourth person. 
And the brand book is the way to make sure that every single person that works with your brand, so your brand becomes a machine. So quickly running through a brand book over here, a cover page, <clears throat> um, their brand is called Tales of Tomorrow, Events, PR and Marketing, that's great. I've got a contents page explaining to you all, all the parts of, of a brand book. So the most important thing is your logo and that you protect your logo at all costs. So it's got to be used as it was created to use to be used. Um, they can't do certain things with and if you're co-branding, there's a specific way of putting those things to, together. You can't just use any fonts you want because you've chosen fonts that are based on what your character of your brand is, what your brand personality is. There's a certain grid spacing. And these all come into the, the, the question again when you asked earlier, um, why hire a professional? Because all of these things are important if you want your company to grow. And if you want your company to speak the same language, it doesn't matter who is speaking it. So if uh, Facebook is speaking a social media or a newspaper article or a video or, or whatever it is that you're doing, this book defines how you do it visually. So it's basically like a little makeup book that says to you, you can only wear green makeup because it suits your skin tone <laughs> in, the, in the larger scheme of things. So we'll have a quick look over here. Um, they've included their brand strategy. First in a, um, a brand book will show you the dimensions of your logo. There's nothing worse than somebody trying to fit their logo into an advert by squashing it sideways, topways, bottomways. Your logo is your logo. The proportions were designed specifically for the lettering around it. It needs to stay as it is. So for example, on this screen here, you've got the logo, you've got the logo breakdown. It shows you specifically how that logo is made up, the dimensions of it, and it needs to stay that way for eternity until you say differently <laughs> or you decide you need to rebrand. It shows fonts are used, what colors are used. So if by some chance somebody in India has to brand a van for your company when it's grown that big, they know what to do, they know what colors to use, they know what fonts to use. Then you get um, allowed uses. So your brand book tells you what are you allowed to do with my logo. So on the left you can see um, they've got quite a variety of uses that you, you are allowed, uh, normal black and white, color on black, white on black, white on color, and a section to the left that shows you what you may not do. So it'll, you, there you can see good examples of uh, do not squash it, do not stretch it, do not put it somewhere where you can't read it clearly, do not change the colors. So the brand book is basically, <laughs> I like to joke about my name being Karen, I'm Karen, not Karen, but I am I'm Karen in this way, that you've got to obey the rules of the brand book. <laughs> it's there for a reason. It's so that everybody knows who this about what your message is. So continuing here, you've got a logo mark, which is an abbreviated version of your logo that you use when you don't have enough space for the full logo. Specifically, social media and um, profile pictures require a logo mark. It's an abbreviated version that people will still recognize instantaneously that represents your complete logo. And then it shows you again, what can you do with it and what can't you do with it? And how um, a partnering logo is when you work with other brands, you're working together, but that you're still the host. So that's an example of that. I won't go into too much detail. I can get a bit carried away. Typography is very important. So um, you might think uh, uh, this looks like Arial, but it's not Arial. <laughs> it might look like Calibri. It might look like a million and one other sans serif fonts, as we call them. So these are the your more modern fonts. Um, yeah, we've got a bit of a modern serif at the um, your font then is used for your brand. So how are you going to write your documents? These fonts are, are they're set in stone. As a brand, you don't want to go out of these unless you're doing something creative um, where you've got a poster 
and um, you're trying to shout at someone in your post and you want to use some, some sort of graffiti style thing or something, special circumstances can, you can step outside of your, your rules, but as a general, your consistency and your consistency in how you look. If you are doing all sorts of things all over the place and using 24 different types of fonts because you just love them, people are going to get confused. And if you confuse your clients, you confuse your target market, they, don't, they stop trusting you. You look like you're unprofessional. And um, it's not to say you have to be boring. You can, uh, as you can see on the on the homepage here, this is this is not a boring brand. They've got colors that pop but they do have the structure in place and the ground roots in their typography that makes them look professional and people lets people know who they are and that you can trust them and that they're going to be consistent every time you get work from them and that's just a sample page i mean the brand book this is the, an example of a, a medium-sized brand book so these things can get complex. Bang & Olufsen has a 114 page brand book and what you are and aren't allowed to do. Um, this is grid spacing. These things again, it's just back to the point that it's all important for you to do these things to create consistency in your brand. It's, it's so very important that people can identify you and what you stand for through your consistency and your visual styling. It's not only about what you say, it's not only about what your product looks like. If you can't represent those things in a cohesive brand where people see you first, <laughs> you might. So um, here you see how the grid spacing works for, for their specific com company. And when I do grid spacing, I do it for um, different types of documents, print documents, social documents, uh, web documents, et cetera, et cetera. A uh, big part of your uh, brand book is your color styling. These are the allowed used colors. So if you ask me about Tales of Tomorrow, can I use pink? What is the answer here? It's no. <laughs> you can't use it. It's like a diet. I like to say this. So it's like a diet. Um, Yils and Marie, we know we, we love to struggle about with our diets. Um, often people will get a, get the diet and then they'll go, but can I eat this? And my quest, my answer is, is it on the list? Is it on the list? And they go, no, it's not on the list, but I was just wondering. Then the answer is no. So you can't use pink with this brand and you, you can't use lime green. To the colors that you have chosen for a reason. So these colors were chosen for a reason for this particular brand. They have two personas. Their first persona is bold. They want to be very out there. They want to catch your attention with um, rich graphics. And then they've got a more subtle side on the side of, um, uh, oh, I forget now which, which side. They've got two sides of the company. And the second side necessitated that they were a little softer in some of their their visual. So that's why we've got the curious. And then lastly, in this specific, this specific brand book is image styling. What kind of pictures are you going to, to use? Or are you going to randomly go along and pick pictures that you think look nice at the time? Um, when you get to the point of, of growing your company, even the images that you use need to speak the same speak the same language. So you can see they've got some, some quite graphic patterns. They've got very um, rich, for example, these sort of more gradient bokeh images are um, in similar colors to, to what's in their logo. It's, it's setting a mood, it's moody, it's, um, they want you to feel uh, the experience of being at one of their events is not like um, everybody else's event. And then you've got, so your color styling matches your image styling. So you can see their secondary image palette is, um, it's the same feeling of images, of, of uh, composition and, and focus, but it's a lot softer now because they're starting to talk more about communications rather than events. And 
it's tricky with this company because they've got these two two different sides um, making them work together can often be done just by um, sticking to the font. So when you've got such a diverse image selection because you have such diverse um, services, your font usage, for example, here you can see they've got and they've got bold and then they've got light. This is a it, it's a it's a it's a way of pulling things together to say yes this this belongs to us and it's always top left and it's always following the grid structure that that is set out in the brand book so long story short a brand book is to make sure that your brand grows consistently that you're presenting the same message across all channels um, and when people see any form of they should eventually start to go, hey, I know those guys. Hey, I know that picture. Hey, I know what they're selling. I've seen these guys before. And that's what you want. You want the recognition and you want that continued recognition. Um, and yeah. yeah. Love it. Um, so I think Chris, Christopher has a question. Christopher, did you just make sure you're on? Um, unmute yourself to ask. Yeah, I did have a question, um, Karen. Yeah. Having a look I've, I've invested in a brand book yeah. and it's helped me with with my new website build, which has been great. It's about to be launched, which what? is uh, pretty Literally. exciting. I think it looks really, really good. <laughs> yeah. um, look, I worked with a professional and I think it looks really great, but uh, how do I actually know if it is any good, if it speaks to my target market, if it's going to work out for my business? Has anybody in your target market told you it looks good? Not yet. I haven't really launched too much with it. Oh, um, right. So, uh, like, yeah, it, yes, with my Facebook posts, but yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I think um, a brand book is is shouldn't be confused too much with with marketing. Um, brand uh, brand identity and the creation of your brand book is a beginning phase. It's making sure that your message your visual message about what you stand for is accurate. Mm -hmm. So the next phase after that is obviously going to be your marketing strategy and um, uh, applying what you've got in your brand book to various aspects of, of your company. So if your brand book is working is through feedback. So what I would do is I, uh, and, this is, this is pet hate, pet hate. <laughs> when you go and you ask your daughter, your grandmother, your auntie, and your hairdresser, if your brand book or your, your visual identity is good. And what they would do. Firstly, if they're not, they're not in your target market, they shouldn't have a say. <laughs> Perhaps they could pick out on, on smaller issues. Maybe you've made a typo somewhere. Maybe there's some spacing that is out if they've got a good visual eye for spacing. But choose somebody who can give you good feedback that's also critical feedback. Um, I know it's difficult. Um, it, it's not easy to hear that you've done something that you love and it might not work from a visual point of view. So the best advice I can give is just ask people in your target market and ask for an external opinion from somebody who knows what they're talking about, who has a visual eye and who knows, who knows more about branding. Uh, they're easy to find. If you want to flick it my way, I'll take a look at it and, and let, you, let you know what I think about it as well. There's no easy way to know if it's wrong or right until you start um, promoting it, getting up there and getting people's feedback. But you can, do, you can take steps in the beginning with people you know and people who have some experience in it um, just to, to make some suggestions or or what have you. Right. Thank you, Karen. Sure. That's great. Um, yeah, send that over, Christopher. <laughs> okay, Karen. Just, um, That's awesome. Uh, one last thing. If, if you guys uh, see we're running out of time here, I just wanted to share something with you quickly. Um, the branding questionnaire is on my website. 
So if you go to larkstudio.com.au um, or just .com, I've got them both. Um, you're going to go up at the top here. It says take the brand test. And if you're struggling with your branding, just hop on there, uh, download the brochure, the little questionnaire, and it'll take you through <laughs> seven pages of answering questions that are applicable to help you to establish where your brand should be. There's so many fun questions on there and we're doing a, a more comprehensive um, branding uh, seminar a month we will go through that entire booklet of all the questions that you should be asking to, to build your brand correctly and um, ask yourself the right questions to make sure that it looks the way you want it to look. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for um, giving us all a 101 on the branding. <laughs> it's definitely opened my eyes a lot. I'll be chatting to you <laughs> shortly. <laughs> You'll be, I'll be hounding you about my brand. Um, yeah. So thanks everyone for joining. Really appreciate it. I'm going to, um stop the meeting now because we're just running out of time but yeah thanks everyone lovely to meet you all hope you all have a great day thanks everybody thanks <laughs> bye bye, bye.